This year, I'm introducing a new series that I am calling UFO Roulette. This is where I have a list of 12 of my unfinished objects or UFOs. I'm going to select them at random with the help of this fantastic looking D12 and my beautiful handcrafted dice tower built by my awesome boyfriend and decorated by yours truly. If you'd like to see how this was built, you can check it out on my TikTok. Okay. So. Okay, so. So I have been waiting impatiently for such a long time for that role because I wanted it to be authentic. I wanted it to be on camera and it landed in a spot that you couldn't even see it. So I did keep it untouched. And it is on number 12. The walkaway dress. The walkaway dress. Perhaps you've heard of Stephanie Canada's walkaway dress challenge where seamstresses everywhere were called upon to make the dress as quickly as possible. We won't be doing that. For one thing, I'm a little late to that party. But it's said that this dress is so simple to make that you can start it after breakfast and walk away in it for luncheon. I didn't have any particular fabric in mind for this project, so it gave me the perfect excuse to buy this super cute fabric that Joann's has carried ever since I can remember, but I never had a project that called for it. I wanted to break up the busyness of the pattern, so I will be making view A and pairing it with this pale yellow. It calls for buttons as well, so I bought standard red, as well as these cute ladybug buttons for the front. <sighs> Alright, if I'm understanding these instructions correctly, and I'm pretty sure I am, the first thing we have to do is eat breakfast. The pattern came out in 1952, and I googled the most popular breakfast of 1952, and I got Frosted Flakes. It's really anticlimactic. So I kept Googling. And fortunately I found this article that I will put somewhere, probably all over the screen. It is from McCall's Magazine in September of 1952. It has these baked eggs in tomatoes. So we're gonna make that and that'll be our 1952 breakfast. That is really good. Ugh, I love cooked tomato. And the spices are really what makes this. It's a shame that it takes so long to make though. You're baking for 20 minutes. So there you have it. There's my assessment. It is delish. And once I'm done here, we can get started on the dress. Ugh. All right. So it's a safe bet that we're not gonna have it done by lunch because it is now 20 after four. I don't know how this happens, but it happens a lot. Before I know it, the day's over. But anyway. Hi. Yes, I do see it, but there, there isn't enough room up here for you. There's not enough room. There's not enough room. I don't. I don't. The chair's too small. The chair's too small. Okay, you gotta get down. Anyway, uh, we should still be able to get this done before bed tonight. I would assume if you can get it done between breakfast and lunch, then you should be able to get it done between 4.30 and 10, right? Five and a half hours? Let's just start it and see what happens. What I did do 
while I was busy procrastinating doing everything else. I looked over the measurements and took my measurements. My waist and hip end up on a size 18 and my bust ends up on a size 12. I don't have a size 12 in here. We'll do the size 16 and scale down on the bust as necessary. So let's get started. It's just one piece. Oh, the crap. I think it is. Yeah. Nope. There are two. I don't know if I ever said this before or if anybody ever told you this before, but don't use your fabric scissors on the pattern paper because paper dulls your scissors. I know, right? You'd think that fabric would dull it more, but uh, no. Apparently paper is harsher on scissors than fabric. Now you know. So I had my pattern kind of hanging off the edge. Hansi tried to jump on the, the part that was hanging. Aww. Right in the middle. Cats, man. That took like two hours. Well, more than two hours. Two hours, 20 minutes. To cut all that fabric, mark it out. Anyway, let's see what's next. Stitch darts in front. What we're gonna do, since I'm not quite sure about the fit, pin the darts, then we're gonna put it on just over top. We should be able to get a... Uh... Oh my goodness. Oh, you can't do that. You can't. You got, you got stuff there. You wrecking stuff. Let me let me just move some stuff and then you can get up there. Good lord, cat. You're gonna be the death of me. Okay, I've wasted three minutes of tape to tell you what I said in the first 30 seconds. So let's pin it and get a fit. And uh, I need bigger boobs. Right? Bigger boobs should fix the problem. I think these darts are fine. It's just the side darts will have to adjust. It mostly fits. So I think what we can do, trim a little off the top. I'll take the, the side darts in a little bit. Should actually fix it, hopefully. Yeah. Oh boy, I guess we'll see. <laughs> my machine has been off lately and I thought maybe I could try and fix it. There's this screw that I thought controlled the bobbin tension and that seems to be the problem, so I turned it a little bit to see what would happen and fortunately it turned out to be the buttonhole fine adjusting screw and I have never needed to use it. Okay, <laughs> I did not get it done the other day, but that's okay. Uh, we have a little bit of time tonight, so we'll work on the back piece, see if we can get those pieces sewn together, and if I can do the binding and the snaps on Friday, then by Saturday we should have a completed dress. So, let's get to work. So I just realized that I made a mistake. Not a mistake that can't be fixed, but in reading this pattern, here is the cutting layout and see how this has little dots in it. I was looking at this where it says that is interfacing. So I figured that was just the, the inside lining of it. And I was gonna worry about that later because I wanted to do it in yellow and I don't have enough fabric, but that is not the case. This is the illustration shading key. That is for all your things here. This key is up here, and it just means wrong side of fabric. Right side of pattern is white, wrong side of pattern is dotted. This means that I have to cut another one of these. That's good, honestly, because I was kind of curious how it was supposed to work. It didn't seem like it was big enough, and now I know it wasn't. 
cut out another one of those babies, sew them together, and uh, that's probably all I'm going to have time to do tonight. Maybe I'll have time to sew it together? I don't know. Cutting takes a long time. <laughs> uh, I don't know if there is like a business where you can just buy the fabric already cut for you, but if not, that would be a, a, a moneymaker, I think. I think a lot of people would buy the the patterns already cut out like of the fabric <laughs> just to save the time because maybe it's just me but that's not the fun part cutting it is <sighs> cutting it out sucks so here we go cutting it out again so about stay stitching i never used to do it I think it's because when I did my first project with my grandmother, she said that it didn't really matter because of the fabric we were using. And I've come to realize that it's not just the fabric that we were using, but also where the stay stitches were, it wasn't all that important. All fabrics have a stretch, some more than others, and the fabric we were using was like a quilter's cotton. Like, you've seen me use it a lot before. I have a little bit here to show you. You can see it doesn't stretch a lot that way. It doesn't stretch a lot that way, but it does stretch this way. See that? And that's what's called the bias. And that's really useful in some cases and really bothersome in other cases. So stay stitching keeps the fabric in place while you sew the pieces together to prevent stretching and uh, extra fabric that ends up at the end of your edge when you swore it lined up a second ago. <laughs> what I should have realized is that even though my grandma said it wasn't that important, she still had me do it. I did it on this project, and honestly, it made such a difference that I'll probably never skip that step again. Okay, so I am done with the stay stitching, and I sew the back together. And I just have to say, I always use the, the salvage edge of my fabric. It's nice because you don't have to finish those seams, but a lot of times I won't sew it enough in on the selvage, and you'll see the white poke through. And I didn't do that this time. So this is what we got, just as a light try on. Really happy with that. <laughs> it's looking, I mean, I can't wear it to work or anything, but it's fun, right? Like a Miss Frizzle kind of dress. Yeah. I'm going to call it for tonight, and I will finish this this Friday. Ugh. Oh, hi, cat. It's Sunday morning. I didn't finish the dress Friday for a couple of reasons. Thanks, nice sweaters. That's actually kind of helpful. I didn't finish the dress on Friday for a couple of reasons. One was because we had a heat wave and it was hot. Guys, it was like 80. It was hot. I, I didn't even want to move, let alone sew. But anyway, when I did get ready to sew, I realized that I had planned on making a, a lining and I didn't have enough fabric for it, so I had to go buy fabric. I realized this like a half an hour before Joanne's was going to close, so. So yesterday, Saturday, I went and I got the fabric, and then I went to an award ceremony, which was fun, but I'm almost 40, and man, I can really tell when I've been up late the night before. Let me tell you something, kids. After you hit 30, you can have a hangover without actually being drunk. Now, I'm not saying I'm hungover, but I just feel... Ugh. You know? I don't have a headache, I don't have a stomach ache, and thank God, because I'd still be in bed. That's why we're drinking Monster this morning. So there's the morning report that no one asked for. I'm eating that icing. I guess I should get moving anyway. Ugh. I got to thinking more about the sizing of this dress before I put the lining on, because once the lining's on, the binding's on, it's kind of done. I put on a different bra to see if that would help, but it's still very big in the front, and it isn't even just the chest area, it's the whole front is too big. 
and it does show in the picture it does show that she kind of has the sleeves off like they are sitting but this is very gapy in the front and this is this is very big and then this is very big and this is all with a shirt underneath i'm thinking what i should have done it has on the pattern right here I don't know if the camera's gonna pick it up, but it says lengthen or shorten here. So that's where the waist should be. That is too long for me. I should have brought this down to right there. Take like an inch, inch and a half off the bottom. At this point, kinda wanna see where it fits best on the bust since that's the place that it's wonkiest, fit it according to that. And that, I think, looks good, right? And so where the issue is, is when we bring this around, it puts the snaps too low. So they have to go up higher, and that's where we're getting our extra. That looks like it is in the back. Shorten up the back instead rather than this, I think that'll work. I have to play around with it a little bit. I don't know, people who have made this also said that sizing was an issue and sizing might just be an issue, who knows. So I started my work like a good little sewist, when what to my wondering ears should I hear? A medium twist on a cone and a pup sundae. Thank you. And for some reason, the rest of the day was shot. Well, this project that you're supposed to be able to do in between breakfast and lunch is now going on week two. Granted, I'm not working on it a lot when I do work on it, and I'm putting in a lining. But I also want to try and fix the fitting a little bit. I took my lining back, because it's, it's the back that's the problem, I think, and I just put it on me and took off some from the top to try and get a better fit, and I think that's going to work out pretty well. If I take two inches off of this, and that allows for seam allowance, if I take two inches off, then it looks like it's gonna fit a lot better and that's gonna be a lot easier to adjust on my finished outer garment than trying to adjust the bottom of the back, which is what I was gonna do. And we still have to cut out the bottom back. And then we just have to sew this all together and that's it. No, we gotta put binding on snaps. What am I talking about? I'm wishing it was done is what's going on. But anyway, step one is we're going to make sure we get these markings here transferred where the new new top will be and cut that sucker off. So this is what I ended up with, with my alterations. I just took like a curve off the back. I just eyeballed it. So now these sit a little bit forward and that's where they should sit. And then this sits at my waist, which is also where that should sit. So I am going to cut out the bottom and put this together first before I make the alterations on the outside, just in case I did it wrong. It's fine if it's wrong on the lining, but I don't want to do that to the outside where everybody can see it. So we'll cut out the bottom first. Sew it together, see what we got. I still didn't get enough fabric. I guess I got three yards and I needed five. I think when I got it, I thought, oh, I, I'll just do the, the inside of the skirt and not a full lining. It's kind of late to 
decide that though since I already cut out the other two pieces. <laughs> I don't have enough of this to do even one of the panels I need, let alone two. I don't have enough of this fabric to do the second one because I thought maybe, you know, in the back where you wouldn't see it and then just have the... I don't know. It could work. But it can't work because I don't have enough of that fabric either. I guess I have to go to Joanne's. I really don't want to. So I guess I'll figure out how much I actually need. Man, this sucks. That was a huge oversight. This fits a lot better. So probably if you've made the dress before, you could definitely make this in between breakfast and lunch. No doubt in my mind. Findings next. Alright, so this is where we're at. There's only one more thing to be done on the dress, and that is to add the the snaps. The pattern assumes that they're sew-in, but these aren't. These are pound in. It instructs you on the back to use a spool to pound down on it, because it's got the hole in the middle. But I have these are from my grommets. And I, I think that'll work better, personally. Maybe I'm wrong. I, I could just ruin the whole thing. Maybe I shouldn't hit it so hard I might have ruined it. It still works, but I got it stuck on there. <laughs> ah.
So here she is. All done. This is probably my favorite thing that I've made so far. This is actually the best made thing I've made so far. It just looks well made. I don't have the lapel mic on, so I apologize for any background noise. I did shut off the air conditioner, but we are going to make this short because, pardon my French, but il fait putain de chaud. It's not even so much that it's hot, but it is so humid. I wanted to braid my hair for this and I couldn't. It was sticking to my fingers. Anyway, criticisms. A lot of the criticisms are just the style of dress itself. For one thing, it's meant to kind of sit like this and that doesn't really feel natural. So I keep wanting to, to do that and then you end up with this. If you have it sit where it's supposed to, it does fit pretty well. Another thing that I have a problem with, if I have to bend down for anything, You see what it did? It comes up with it. And I know a lot of that is the, the cotton that I used, but it just catches on itself. As far as what I did that I'm not happy with, I'm not happy with the pocket placement. That's pretty much it. It's very close to the center and I feel like it would have been better out. I don't hate it though. And the only other thing that I have that's an issue with it are the snaps. And it's not really anything I did wrong. The snaps themselves aren't great quality and the one comes undone sometimes. As long as I don't do anything crazy, it doesn't come undone, and both of them don't come undone. Not too many worries there. All in all, I noticed when I was editing that there were <laughs> two more outfit changes, which means that there were at least nine days that I worked on this project. I don't really know how long it took me to make the dress. And as I said before, I did add some things. I added a lining, I added pockets, those aren't on the original pattern. So really, I made almost two full dresses. But I don't regret it. I wasn't going for speed, which is good. I really wanted to do this right. And I really wanted to get it done, too. Sewing takes a long time. And sometimes I don't want to start something because I don't have a lot of time to work on it. So then I just don't do it. But with this, I just did little bits here and there. I started this in April. This was supposed to be April's video. I finished it in May. So it was a dress that you're supposed to be able to make between breakfast and lunch. And I got it done between April and May. My biggest takeaway from this is sew what you can, when you can, as often as you can. And eventually it's all gonna come together. Thank you for coming along on this journey with me. If you enjoyed this video, please do give it a thumbs up and leave a comment down below. It helps the video be seen by other people who also might enjoy watching it. If you'd like to see more aesthetic sewing content and more UFO roulette, please do subscribe to this channel. I am trying to upload at least one project a month and we're going to get there one way or another. But until next time, keep sewing. Let me get all of this on camera so that I can put in cuts of my shirt just in case that comes up. Sorry if you can hear my dog chewing on his bone. I'm not going to stop him. I don't know if anybody can tell, but all the curtains in the room are tucked up because a certain little kitten has decided that he really likes playing with them. My camera doesn't want to focus. So about stay stitching. 